Welcome back. This is Miss Faye and this is my world. Today's topic is, is he the man of your dreams or your nightmares? Is he the man of your dreams or your nightmares? Before we get started, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to all of the new viewers, all of the new subscribers, and welcome to you who have been with me from the beginning. I really appreciate you. Now, those of you who are new to the channel, I will answer your relationship questions. So at the end of the video, I'll show you a link where you can send in your questions and I will either answer them privately through the email or I will share them online with the collective and it can be your decision. Now, those of you who are interested in these caps, they are available in my online store and you'll find a link in the description. Now it's time for our daily affirmation. And we do these affirmations to help with our spiritual growth. And here it is. I am confident in who I am. I stand in my truth and show up with authenticity. I am confident in who I am. I stand in my truth and show up with authenticity. Be your real self, not the self that you created. Be authentic, people. Let this affirmation sink in. I am confident in who I am, who you were born to be. Be confident in that person. I stand in my truth and show up with authenticity. Let this affirmation be a blessing to you today. Be real, people. Be for who you were supposed to be. You came here to be, not the person that you are creating. Be authentic. I am confident in who I am. I stand in my truth and show up with authenticity. Let this affirmation be a blessing to you today. Now it's time for movement. And we do these movements to get our blood circulating. Now today's movement, we're going to do another arm movement. And what we're going to do is just raise our arm straight up and then bring it back. All right, people, raise it up and bring it back. And we're going to do it for five times. You ready? Let's go. One. Two. Three. Raise it up. Four. And raise it up. Five. How does that feel? Now let's do the other arm. One. Two. Raise it up. Three. Keep it up now. Four. You got it? One more. Five. How does that feel? People, keep up these movements. It not only makes you feel better and get your blood circulating, but it's good for your physical, your mental, and your spiritual health. Now let's dive into the message today. We got a letter. Let's read this letter and see what she says. Here we go. She entitles her letter, I am lowering my standards feeling used in relationship. I'm a 22-year-old female and have been seeing a guy 24 for five months. We met during medical school. He is my first relationship. We knew each other for around a year before. At the end of the school term, we went out 
to a bar and expressed that we were interested in getting to know each other. He had been struggling with school and was going through a breakup for a relationship of three years. So he wasn't going to sit the latest exams and was planning to go on a gap year to repeat the year. Because he would be going away, he offered to spend the night at my place so that we could talk. <laughs> Sound like he wanted sex to me. He could talk to you on the phone. What do you need to come to your place for? I was very naive and immature to invite him over, but I felt that I would trust him because I knew him from before. Needless to say, he was very quick to become sexual. That's why I wanted to come over there. That night, things escalated where he didn't quite take my virginity, but he fingered me. The next morning, he expressed that it would be difficult for us to see each other since he'd be going away. I asked him why he didn't think about this before, if he was taking me seriously, which he wasn't. Anyway, we agreed to see how things go. I think part of me continued to see him because I didn't want my first experience to be so insignificant. So now you're trying to make it happen. Not him. He already got what he wanted. But now you're trying to make something out of this. You're trying to make a relationship out of a situation. Ladies, don't do that. For number one, don't fall into these traps. If a man asks you to come over to your home, he's not coming over there just to watch TV. He's coming over there to have sex. Put that through your head. Put that through your head. Because this is the, one of the man's main motivators. Sex, ladies. So don't be fooled by that. So now that you allow this man to touch you, now you feel like you want to make a relationship out of it. It'll never happen. It doesn't happen like that. Let's see what else you say. There are several things that make me doubt the relationship. Firstly, I think I don't feel safe or trust his intentions since what happened. He is very sexual. And when I would place boundaries, he is quick to discourage them or toy around with them. For example, he would always have genitalia contact and sometimes would try to force it in. I stated a boundary that we shouldn't have this contact, so he would continue to dry hump me with clothes on instead of respecting I didn't want sex. Well, why are you still engaging with him? Why? Why are you still going over there? You can't change him. You can't change his opinion. If he wants sex, that's what he wants. And there's nothing that you're going to be able to do about that to sway him. As long as you keep making yourself available, he's going to be pressuring you for sex. And the dry humping, that's not going to last long. I'm telling you, it's not. Either he's going to get it and leave, or he's just going to leave you. Period. I have lost my virginity to him eventually. I know you did. <laughs> I'm telling you. A man is not going to sit up there and dry hump you ever. I don't care. If you don't want to have sex with him, don't bother with him. Leave him alone. This man has made his intentions plain to you. In the beginning, he wants sex. That's it. It's you who thinks that you can make something else out of it. So now you eventually did lose your virginity to this man. It was my choice, but I felt some pressure because every time we met, he would be sexual and I would have to keep rejecting it. 
and I thought that sex may sort out some of our other issues. I don't know what made you think that. Sex does not sort out anything. Sex is only a pleasurable experience. Other than the fact it spiritually bonds you to the person that you had sex with. But it does not help you to work out any issues. See, women, many of us believe that we can change a man through sex. A man does not change through the sexual experience. In fact, a man does not uh, look at the sexual experience the same way that a woman does. When a woman has sex, it's emotional. She, her heart is in it. Her soul is in it. You see? But men, when they have sex, it's for the sex, for the experience, for the pleasure of the experience. That's it. That's it. They don't, their emotions are not in it. You know, it doesn't make them love you any better or anything. You are just an object of sex. A sexual tool. That's all you are. See, ladies, to overcome that, the only way you can overcome that is to take your time with a man, to bond with the man on another level, not on the sexual level, on another level where the man feels bonded to you. And that takes time. And ladies, this is where a lot of us get hung up believing if we give him sex, but then he's going to give us what we desire. No. After he gets sex, and after he gets his fill of sex with you, he'll start looking for it somewhere else. Because he never bonded to you. You never gave him a chance to bond to you. Now you have a soul tie, a spiritual soul bond, but you don't have an emotional heart bond where he's connected to you his heart is connected to you at all. It's just sex. It was my choice, but I think I felt some pressure because every time we met, he would be sexual and I would have to keep rejecting it. And I thought sex may sort out some of our other issues. The most recent thing he has done was that I declared that I didn't want to have sex with him until all the other issues have been fixed. And then one night I woke up to him having sex with me. <laughs> because now, now he feels like, you know, he can get it. From you anytime he wants it. You lay it up there with him. What do you think? I had just started to build up trust with him. And it's all come crashing down. He said that he truly thought I was awake. He didn't, he didn't care if you were awake. You are just a sexual object. Like an object. That's all you are. A sexual object. Object. You never gave this man an opportunity to bond with you on an emotional level. You gave in to his sexual desires and now he just sees you as a sex object. That's it. And it doesn't matter whether you are asleep or awake. It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. He don't need for you to be awake. He feels immense guilt about what has happened and has apologized so many times for the way things have played out and said that he is going to respect my boundaries from now on. But I can't help to feel resentment and feeling like he's always felt entitled to my body. Well, you're the one that gave him your body and made him feel entitled to it. You did it. You even said in the letter. It was your choice 
to go on and have sex with him, to give him what he's been wanting. So you made this bed for yourself. There are certain other issues, such as that he's not Christian, and I am. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, mm. I was raised a Christian. And um, I don't know if it's the doctrine or the Christian theology, but I don't think you're supposed to be having sex until marriage if you're a Christian. Isn't that true? You know, when I was when I was raised Christian, that was that was the way to go. I mean, that was the teachings that you don't have sex until marriage. All right, but you say that you're a Christian, and he's not. Okay, I'm a little confused there about uh, your Christian doctrine. Okay. He's stated getting in touch with his spiritual side since he grew up Christian but lost touch. I told myself I don't want to get married to someone who's not Christian. And I can't help but feel like I should be dating someone for who they are now and not for who they promised to be. <laughs> Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It sounds like you're contradicting yourself here. All right, let, let me get a handle on this. You are Christian. Okay, now I assume you say you're Christian. It's that you follow the Christian doctrine. Okay. The Bible. That's who you follow, the Bible. Now, he's saying that he was Christian years ago, but he lost contact with being a Christian. And he's probably telling you that because you've already been intimate with this man. You were not worried about him being Christian when you had sex with him. So, so I'm not getting it. Being a Christian, does that mean you can go out and have sex with anybody you want to? Is that what being Christian means to you? That is no discernment. You, you just go out and have sex. If you if you whip somebody that you feel like you like, which was this guy, you just felt like you liked him and you had sex with him, but you say you're Christian now. Does that mean that as a Christian that you are free to have sex with other people? Not being you're not married to anybody. But you can go around having sex with whoever being Christian. All right. I just, I just want to understand where we're we going with this. Okay. And you say that you should be dating someone who they are now and not promised to be. Well, if he had sex with you, I'm at a loss here. So what is it that he needs to be doing to show you that he's on the same page as you? Well, what as a Christian, what is it that he needs to be showing you? That he is a Christian. He needs to say it. He's, he said he was at one time. All right. Let's see what else you say here. I should be dating someone for who they are now and not who they promised to be. Also, he is more behind in his career than I would like and compared to me. Due to his mental health and other issues, it's meant that he's taken a total three years out of his study in medical school. When I would be a doctor, he will still be two years behind in medical school. Part of me feels like he lacks drive. He is working on his mental health and studies. He expected me to pay for his dates and asked me what I bring to the table when I said 
I would love if a guy paid for me in a date. He's fixed several issues and does pay for dates now and buys me flowers and he is seriously committing to change and acknowledges that he is so behind in life and career that he feels awful for the past. I can't help but feel like I'm lowering my standards. Okay. All right. Let's go back and see exactly what your standards are. <laughs> okay. Now, from your letter, it looks like your one of your standards is you want a Christian to marry. You'll have sex with them, but to marry, you want a Christian. Okay. Now, you saying that he has some kind of mental health issues and it puts him behind in his medical studies. Okay. So you're going to be a doctor. You want to marry a doctor. I guess that's one of your standards because you keep mentioning about medical school. So you're going to be a doctor and you want to marry a doctor. Okay. All right. So now what are the other issues? That he didn't pay for dates or whatever. So you got him paying for dates. But you still feel like you're lowering your standards. Well, yeah, you're trying to train this man to be a proper mate for you. And I think that's the wrong way to go. Date a man who has now the things that you desire in a mate. But I want to say something about you sleeping around. <laughs> okay. See, many times when a woman gives away her virginity, it opens a door. It, 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 it opens a door to sexual experiences ahead. The way that you gave your virginity away to this man did you consider whether he was a Christian when you did that? You must have thought about him in med school and where he wasn't meeting your standards, but you had sex with him anyway. And you say it was your choice, but you felt pressured. Of course you felt pressured because he was letting you know what he wanted all along. Now, you are thinking that maybe this man could have been an ideal partner for you. I suppose that's why you had sex with him. But now you realize, no, he's not meeting your standards. If he's not meeting your standards, then he's not for you. Walk away. Maybe he's not meeting your standards right now. But maybe in years later, he may. But for you not to stay there with him, for him to make these changes, no, leave him. And hopefully next time you'll meet somebody that meets your standards. But stop having sex because you need to break that soul tie with him before you can move on. Or you're going to take his energy into your next relationship. And you really don't want that. That's why I say between these sexual relationships, you need to take a year to clean yourself out from any negative energy and to get over him. I don't know uh, if you say how long, you say for five months now, that's no time. Five months and you already had sex. You let him take your virginity in five months. Well, it happens. Don't settle. If this man doesn't meet your standards here and now, let him go. Let him go. Take some time to clear that energy out. Because you have a soul bond with him now because she had sex with him. You need to clear that out of your system before you engage sexually with another person. And be careful having sex with these people because you're collecting their energies when you do that. Be sure that you are with someone that you intend to be with. And be sure that they intend to be with you. That's why it takes time. 
You take longer than five months. I say you should take a year with a person before you even think about having sex with them. See, you you had this sex believing it was going to fix your relationship. Sex has never fixed anybody's relationship. That's not, that's not where the cure is in sex at all. Women think that because when they have sex, their emotions are all involved. When men have sex, it's just the experience. They can have sex with somebody they don't even like. They can have sex with somebody they're not even attracted to. Period. Have full-on sex and walk away like it never happened. That's a man. Because a man's emotions are not involved in the sexual experience. Unless the man has already bonded to you on an emotional level. Ladies, we'd be too quick to give our bodies to these men. And one reason we do it, because we feel pressured that we're going to lose him if we don't. And that's why we do it. Ladies, every man you meet is not going to be the man of your dreams. That's why you take your time with him. You don't have sex with him right away. You take a long time with him to make sure that he's not going to be the man of your nightmare. Don't give a man your all in the, in the few months that you know him. Don't do that. You want to know him. You want to know that he's truthful. He's honest. Now, let's look at this situation in the letter. You're in medical school. He was in medical school. So you feel like you going to be a doctor. He going to be a doctor. I understand that. I understand that wholeheartedly. But the both of you are young. You have time. And with time, he's going to mature. And so will you. But he's not meeting your standard right now. So I believe you should probably leave this situation alone. Work on your degree. Get your foundation in order. And be the best version of yourself. Him, let him work on himself. Away from you. Because if you continue to be with him while he's working on this, he's going to use you as a crutch. You don't need that. He needs to know how to stand on his own two feet. Away from you. With his health issues or whatever he has. Mental health or whatever. He needs to work that out on his own. But you... Work on yourself. Walk away from the situation. And if it's meant to be, when he grows up, you mature some, you, you, you get your certificates or whatever you need for your practice, let him work on his. And maybe in time, you two may find each other again. If it was something there that was meant to be. Okay? But ladies... Stop trying to make your relationships be more than what they are or your situationships. Ladies, you quit trying to make it happen. Okay? Don't give him sex. And he'll do everything to try to make it happen. But don't allow him to be in your personal space. If you invite him over to your place, he's just coming over there for sex. And if he invites you to his place, that's what he wants. Sex. That's it. You ought to know that in your head. That's a no-brainer. Quit going over there. Do other activities. Have him to take you out. Do other things. Stay away from each other's homes. Because you don't want to engage in sex. You're trying to bond with him. And for him to bond with you. And that takes time. But you can bond through enjoying each other and other activities and getting to know each other doing other things together and this is what makes the bond strong so by the time you have sex he's all in he's emotionally in because he has emotionally bonded with you that's the key ladies 
not jumping and having sex and thinking that that's going to change your situation. I hope that you all understand the message today. And I really hope that it helps. Ladies, take your time when you meet a man. Make sure that he is the man of your dreams and not the man of your nightmares. You make the wrong decision and your life can become a living hell. But if you make the right decision, you can live the rest of your life in paradise. I hope that this message helps someone and I really hope that you understand it. Now, those of you who have questions that you would like for me to answer, here's the link. Send your questions to Miss Faye's World, YT at Hotmail.com. That's Miss Faye's World, YT at Hotmail.com. And try to keep your letters to one page. Just summarize the situation and ask the question. And if you prefer that I answer your question privately through the email, just put it at the very top of your letter and I will comply. I want to thank you so much for your comments and your letters and a special thank you to those that leave a donation. I really appreciate all of you and I wish you all the very best and I really hope to see you next time.